So generally when you create a rig in Blender, most of your controls are actually bones. But when it comes to animating, you usually want to make it a bit easier for animators to actually see the controls. Or if you're going to animate yourself, of course, it's pretty much up to you anyway. Uh, so sometimes what I'll do is I'll make the bones just larger or extend them just to make them a bit more obvious. But sometimes you can't really do that with every single bone. But what you can do is you can actually change the shape or the appearance of the bone by assigning specific objects or curves to serve as control objects. And you don't have to actually create a single control for every single bone. All you have to do is create a couple of reference objects and point the bone at it. So it's fairly simple. Select your bone and you'll see under viewport display under your bone properties that we have a custom shape. And so under custom shape you can choose any curve object or even piece of a polygon object and use it as a control. So in object mode create a couple of shapes. You can either use uh, some default shapes like a circle or custom shapes. It just depends on what you're looking for. So I'm just going to use something simple. I'll use a polygon shape and we'll start with a simple triangle. That should be fine. Okay. And so let's say I want to assign this to control, let's say, the wrist. So all I have to do is go to, I'll go to pose mode, select my wrist, and under bones, viewport display, custom shape, and then eye drop, select the object, or you can of course select it from the list here. Now usually I'll create an object that I'm going to pretty much spe uh, specifically use for controls, and I'll assign that just to keep things simple. Now as you see when, it, when you create a polygon or some of these curve objects, they come in with a, a face on them, but what you can do is in object mode, you can actually select that object, go to your curve, your curve or data properties for it, under, where was it? Oh, here we go. Under shape, you just tell it fill mode is none, and then you'll just get the curve. Okay, so now I've got that simple curve, and as you can see, it updated automatically on the wrist. Now, as you can see on the wrist here as well, it's angled at an interesting direction. It's sort of pointing down, it's sort of pointing towards the wrist. Let's say you wanted to rotate it or scale it or anything like that. So simply switch yourself into pose mode, select that control, go back to your bone properties, and under custom, you can change the scale, you can change the rotation, you can do whatever you need to do to make this control more like what you have in mind and what you want to see. And this way, when you're animating, you don't have to keep all your bones visible. You can just have them inside, in the background, and you can see these curve objects just right outside. You can also change its position in space, like offset it from the location using your translate values. So you can make little adjustments to make sure the controls end up where you need it. And you can pretty much do the same thing with uh, both wrists. So I'm going to grab the other wrist. Actually, let me see if I can symmetrize this. So I'll go to edit mode. And with my wrist selected, I'm going to right click and say symmetrize. And then I'll go back to pose mode. And as you can see, it updated the left side to match the right side. Now, of course, once you're done, setting up your controls and your control shapes. You can take those curves, your reference objects, and just hide them. And you don't need to create a separate object for every single bone. You just create one or two, and you can assign those shapes to as many bones as you want. Uh, you will have to keep the uh, reference object within the scene, but unlike things like Maya, you don't have to create a curve for every single bone. You just have the one reference.